Dracula, Alashma. Dracula, the originator of the vampire myth in literature. This guy didn't sit around sparkling in the sun. <laughs> Dracula is not a guy you'd play basketball with or invite to prom, and not just because he's a few hundred years old and the age difference would be just creepy. Want to dance with the lady? Ew. He lurks in the shadows, kills people, and drinks their blood. What? It's high on electrolytes. But is he a total big bad, or can we scrounge up a little bit of sympathy for the baddie old coot? Well, for one thing, we don't actually know much about this guy. He's usually up in his castle, hanging out with his vampire brides, doing who knows what. He's not exactly one for socialization, and we don't get a huge long backstory either. It's a little hard to sympathize with a guy you don't know. And the mystery around him makes him seem like nothing but a villain. Plus, a vampire polygamist living in a creepy castle doesn't exactly scream a uh, good guy for most people anyway. Well, he's not that bad. And yet he does tell us, I too can love. You yourselves can tell it from the past. Oh, how sweet. But what past? Unfortunately, we have to use our imagination to cook up whatever tragic past Dracula might have experienced. It's possible that Dracula has loved and lost in his past, and that's why he's so damaged and deranged in the present. Stoker isn't giving us any more details. No matter what happened to the Count, when we think of him this way, we can almost sort of kind of relate to him. At least to the loving and losing part. Not so much the uh, blood-sucking and fond attachment to middle-aged torture devices. Without a thorough backstory, we can hardly get to know him. After all, how can we judge someone we don't really know? We wouldn't judge a book by its cover, so why should we judge a bat by its fangs? So is Dracula 100% bad? Or is it okay to feel a little sorry for the bloodsucker? Smoke amongst yourselves.